What's up, y'all? Say what's up. What's up? <laughs> what's up? We're gonna be doing my most watched video. A pair of custom Vapor Maxes. What's this? Shoe. It's a shoe. Yeah. So what we're, the, to start off, fill your toe box with filler paper or uh, a shoe. I mean, not a shoe. A sock dish towel, a towel, whatever, but make sure you put something in the front so that it gives it a good uh, surface to paint on. To prep the shoe, you really don't have to do nothing. You don't have to take acetone to the to this part. This is like foam. This is like the material uh, on the bottom of the Jordan 11. You're gonna dye it, so you don't have to prep that. You don't really prep this with the acetone because this is plastic. What you do want to do with this is use adhesion promoter. This is plastic adhesion promoter. You want to spray it, wait three minutes, spray it on there again, wait three minutes, spray it on there again, wait three minutes, and then paint it. Uh, that's going to help it stick to this. And then, or you can use uh, it's uh, I think it's called too hard, not too soft, but too hard. Uh, I think that's it's like a plastic thing as well so you can use it on there um other than that man let's go ahead and get i'm gonna uh load the paint into my uh airbrush and then we're gonna get started because we're gonna do a fade effect the best way to do a fade effect is on your airbrush if you don't have one you can do it if you don't have one you can do it um on a paintbrush but the best thing to do is do it on an airbrush so we're gonna load our airbrush with the paint then we're gonna be back Bye. Say bye. I went back and did it. I taped up, man, it takes a long time to tape up Vapor Maxes, but I just didn't feel like having to go back and then take the paint off of all the areas that I, you know, cause I would have done it, but uh, hey, let's just take a, a while and tape up. You know, I'm gonna get in there a little bit more, but I did tape up the shoe. Like I said, I need to hit, I'm gonna finish taping up right there too, but it does take a long time to get down in these grooves and stuff like that. So uh, tape up, because once we airbrush, it's gonna be so satisfying taking that tape off and then having a nice surface for these to add, add that paint to it. So tape. So we're at the uh, airbrushing point. Now what I did try, now when you, paint cloth or any you know different type of shoes a uh, new method that i've tried now is i'll take a paintbrush in my paint and i'll try to paint in crevices anybody that tries to spray paint you'll notice like when you spray you have to like bend stuff to get down in there so i take a a, a paintbrush and i went ahead and took my paint and painted down in that crevice so now I can just paint the tongue. I can just paint here. I don't. I don't have to worry about when I airbrush. A lot of times, if you uh, airbrush and you move the fabric, you can see some white where you didn't get where you missed. So I just took a, a paintbrush and really got down in there and got this little tab thing. Got behind it really good. So uh, another thing that I'm trying this time around, I, I see people dye the uh, insides and. They dye it. Uh, I don't know if they go back and paint it, but I'm gonna go back and paint it. Uh, I'm gonna dye it, then paint. You know, there have been instances way back where I have painted, and then you know I let the shoe sit for a couple days. And when you put your 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 
foot in there, the paint doesn't come off, but it leaves like a, uh, like a mark where you first put your shoe in there on the, on the, on the, um, shoe. So again, the paint didn't come off on my sock, but the actual shoe showed a mark where your sock went in, if that makes sense. It was like a little white mark over top of the, or like a gray. So I want to see if you dye, then paint, it's going to be all black. And you know, so I'm hoping to rectify that and see if that fixes that, you know, because you know, I'm all about learning and fixing stuff as you do it. So uh, I'm gonna go back and paint my inside. That's just dye. So all I used was this Angelus, the lead, the black jet black leather dye, which I just ordered some more because I ran out. So I just used that to paint the inside. So now I'm about to airbrush. I'm gonna start at the bottom here with the purple and come up to about here uh, with my airbrushing. All I mix with my airbrush paint is water. I talked about that before. I don't use too thin anymore because too thin changes the color ever so slightly. And then when you go back and do touch-ups, your paint that you're taking out of the jar just ain't the same. So I'm using water. It doesn't change the color of the paint. So 50% water, 50% paint. All right, so let me uh, move this back a little bit. I'm gonna pour some paint in here. All right, I got a little bit in there. Let me spray. That thing's coming out ever so smoothly. So as I mentioned, we're gonna airbrush. Starting down here. And let it fade up a little bit. Boom. That's all you need to do. I'm gonna hit a, you know, I'll hit a couple more coats because I want a darker purple. But if you're looking for a lighter purple, it ain't gonna take long. Boom. So this purple in the back, I'm gonna get it all the way up. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the top because I'm gonna paint that black. So even if you do hit it, you can go back and the black will cover it up. Boom. So I was gonna time lapse it, but hey, look, let's just let y'all see how I see it. I think I'm gonna make me, well, I, ain't, I don't think I am. I've never custom out the paper, uh, uh, a pair of Vapor Maxes for myself. So I'm gonna do that coming up. Cause I, I, I do some really good designs on some Vapor Maxes and I wanna see what it feels like to have a good pair of Vapor Maxes myself. So I'm gonna do some for me. I don't know what design yet, but it's coming. Okay, so if you're using too thin, you need to heat set it. Meaning, you need to take your heat gun when you're done painting that whole color or when you're done painting the whole shoe on the outside and the inside too, because I forgot you'd be using too thin on the inside too. Not too thin, too soft. That's what I meant. If you're using too soft, uh, make sure you heat set it. Take your heat gun and heat up the shoe. Not too close, you don't want to burn it. But. Mm. 
That's some good purple right there, boy. I'm gonna darken it a little bit more. Get down in there, make sure you get your grooves. Nice little deep purple. The good thing you don't have to worry about, and you shouldn't have to worry about this with regular shoes either, either if you do your prep right, but you're 100% on these. Cloth don't crack. So no matter what you put on here, it can't crack. Because it's cloth, you're, you're airbrushing paint on cloth, it can't crack. Leather is different. Leather, if you don't prepare it right, it can crease up in anything. But the main thing you have to worry about here on cloth is spray in your crevices, you know. Make sure when you move your shoe like this that you know, you don't see any areas that you missed. So that's key. I learned that the hard way. But you spray in all your crevices. So, so is there a Nike? Oh, I was gonna show y'all another Nike sign. I'm gonna show y'all a crevice that you can miss. So one crevice that you might miss is like up in there, you know, if you spray from the same angle, like if you spray, the paint's gonna go straight on. But if you don't turn the shoe like this to get down in there, you're gonna miss it. So you wanna make sure you spray all around. And that's it, man. Good purple laid down, man, that's good. So I'm gonna spray it on the other shoe, but, and what I mean by heat setting, Well, first of all, man, let's take a moment to acknowledge how your boy takes you through every step explaining it to you. I hate when you get to a YouTube video or something and they just put words up there sometimes and you'd be like, okay, what else? You know, they say something like paint the shoe and they go to the next step. How do I paint? Where do I paint? You know, what's going on? So, heat set, get a heat gun. Go back and forth on your shoe. Don't stay in one spot. Don't just hold it like this. You don't wanna burn your shoe up. Again, you can do this after you paint the whole shoe. You don't have to do it after each step. I'm just showing y'all how to do it. If I was using too soft, this is what I would be doing. Heat setting means it's gonna set it up that too soft ingredients activate with heat. Again, I'm using water, so I don't have to do this but I'm just showing y'all. Boom. Okay, once you go around the whole shoe, I say like two minutes, but again, I don't have to do that. I'm not using too soft. So, uh, I'm gonna spray paint the other shoe. Let me see, if maybe y'all can't see that, but there's an area right here that's a little, it's a light purple. Get right in there. And the good thing about it is, like I mentioned before, I can literally take my paintbrush if I wanted to, dip it in that purple and touch it up. It's gonna be the same exact purple. If you use too soft or too thin, it's a white substance. So it's gonna lighten something up. If you put it in there, you can't go back and touch it up with paintbrush because it's gonna look different gonna be two different purples. So that's why I use water. All right, so I'm gonna do this and I get back with y'all. Yo, let me show y'all something. So I painted the, the fade. Y'all get better pictures uh, when I upload the final pictures, but you can see the fade came out perfect. I painted the tongue. It's wet, that's why I'm not touching. I painted the tongue. I also went back and painted the inside. Again, I'll show y'all pictures of the inside, you know, so y'all can actually see what it looks like in there. But let, the reason why I came back on here, 
painting the inside of your shoe with this. This comes in the box when you order Angela's dye. You get one of these and you can dip it in the paint or the dye and paint the inside. Yo, these are lifesavers. These are lifesavers. I'm going to, I'm going to Amazon. It's a little stick with that little thing. I'm going to Amazon. I'm gonna get me about a hundred of those. That makes painting the inside of your shoe so fast. Yo, I'm talking about you go from maybe 15, maybe 15 minutes to paint the inside of the shoe, 15, 20. You can get that down to like five. Good, strong, thick coats, wet coats. Yo, I seen people do this, but I was like, I never tried that. Yo, that is key. We learned something today, man. That's key. Get, I don't even know what these are called, you know. I, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm gonna have to look it up. Maybe go to Angela's website and see like what's contained in the box and see if they'll tell me what it's called. And then I'm going straight to Amazon to get some of those. Or if Angela's got them on their site, I'll uh, get them from their site. But yo, we learned something today. Uh, so what we got left, I'm gonna take the, uh, I'm gonna take the tape off. And then I think we're gonna, no, I'm gonna take the tape off. Then I'm going to paint. No, I'm gonna take the paint tape off and then I'm gonna dye the bottoms red. I'm gonna go ahead and dye the bottom red. So that'll be the next step. Um, I'll be right back with y'all. All right, so we went back, we did touch up on the shoe. Came out looking really good. All right, so now we're gonna dye the bottoms red. We're gonna dye this red, the clear, and we're gonna dye this foam red. This is like the same foam that you have on Jordan 11s. If you wanna paint that foam area, you're gonna have to dye it first. Same thing with this, you have to dye it. So we're gonna dye this red and dye this red. Let's see if I got me a paintbrush. Yeah. Let me clean this one off real quick. And then I'll show y'all how I'm gonna dye it. Again, be really, really careful with your dye. Dye stains. If it gets on your shirt, it gets on your clothes, you ain't getting it out. Can't wash it out, can't get rid of it. So it's a good thing that we're dying the, the foam area the same color as the bottom area. So that works out in our favor. I'm gonna clean my brush just a tad more. Hmm. I was thinking like, should I go ahead and paint those little squiggly things black? But like I told y'all before, I go in order of uh, color. The darker, the, the lighter the color, that's my next step. Because the darker colors can cover up any, any problem. So that's how I paint. All right. So never like, let me scoot this camera over. Never, Fully load your brush with dye, you know. Put this back in the camera. So when I dip my paintbrush in, I make sure like I get some of it off when I come out. Don't soak your brush. You soak your brush, it's gonna start uh, um, draining or, you know, start running on the shoe. You don't want that. You want enough to just get the part where you want to uh, die at. You don't want this stuff to start running down the side of the shoe. It's going to get all on your paint, everything else. And you don't want that. Because you ain't going to be able to fix it. Unless the area that you need to paint is going to be black. That's why. That's a perfect reason why 
I like paint light to dark. That's just how I do it. You know, and it always works out for me. You know, make sure you get in all the crevices. Sometimes you can mix this in uh, Angela's product called Soul Bright. It gives you a more, the Soul Bright will give you a more uh, thicker. It, it thickens the dye, but I've dyed shoes without Soul Bright before and it comes out perfect. I got a pair of shoes that I dyed blue and a pair of clear soles. That are, actually, they're Air Maxes. I dyed them and I wear them pretty much every day. They're my run around shoes and uh, they still, they, the dye's still on there nice and uh, crisp, so. But just so y'all can see, this is how it is. That's how the dye's gonna come out. So I'm gonna finish dyeing the shoe, but I just wanted to show y'all how I'm doing it. Don't soak your brush. Just get enough on there for the spot you wanna get to because you don't want it to drain. And then dip your brush again and get some more on there. But I'm gonna dye this and I'll be back. All right, so the dye job has been finished on this shoe or this sneaker. You can see that red looks great. Again, I'm painting this red, so I didn't care if it if it bled up. So it's come the shoe's coming along just like we planned. It died. That's one coat. I'm gonna do two coats, but I wanted to show you guys. And you can see how that looks. Let's get it in the light a little bit more. Looks good, man. Nice and juicy. So I'll check back with y'all. Yo, I just finished it. Well. I didn't finish the shoe, but by the time y'all see the video, I will have finished the shoe. I have technically finished it. I need to apply the finisher and my scratch resistant sealer. Uh, I'm gonna go into that real quick. I'm gonna show y'all some photos of the finished shoe first. Then we'll get to the scratch resistant sealer and show y'all all that stuff. So we finished, as I said before, um, my babies, my babies. Still in the meeting, I'm still in the meeting. Yo, these joints came out super smooth. Look at that, man. Woo, 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 woo. These joints came out smooth. I love the deep, Look, okay, so let me do this. Let's go over a few tips with the shoes, all right? So once you're done painting on the plastic parts and the foam, so this part, this part, this part, the plastic, this, this, this part here and all the way around that foam, put this on there after you finish painting. You can use uh, Raleigh Restorations, uh, uh, scratch resistant sealer or this. This is the same thing. You can get this from Michaels. Guys, we all in the 21st century. Just Google Golden Matte Medium. That's it. That's what it's called. Golden is the company, Matte Medium. It, it makes your uh, surface that you just painted, it makes it more, not firm, but it makes it more durable. That's the perfect word. So the plastic parts and the foam, do a whole coat of that. That's the first tip. The second tip is finish your shoe off with Liquid Kicks Official. I say this all the time. Go to their website. I've never tried to get it off Amazon, but it's probably on Amazon. Liquid Kicks Official. I used the factory finish on this one. Hit the whole shoe besides the cloth area. The plastic, the foam, and uh, let's see, you wanna hit the, the foam, the plastic areas with the finisher. See, it gives it a, a nice factory finish. They got gloss, they got matte finish, they got, you know, all kind of different finishes. Okay, that's the second one. The third one is, when you get done with this shoe, you are gonna be like, dang, that was a lot of work. Charge appropriately. 
charge appropriately. If you felt like, hey man, what I did was, you know, but also, okay, let me stay with this tip first. Charge appropriately. This is this custom is way different than you ordering a pair of Air Force Ones from me saying, hey, look, I want Michigan State on a pair of Air Force Ones. I can wrap that up probably same day if I really feel like it. This one here, it's gonna take you some time because you gotta die, you gotta wait, you gotta die, you gotta wait, you gotta paint, take the tape off, you gotta hit it with the uh, adhesion promoter, you gotta wait, you gotta paint it, then you gotta put the golden matte medium on it, then you gotta put the finisher on it. There's a lot of steps when doing vapor maxes. That's why some people don't do vapor maxes or some people charge a, 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 you know, a outrageous rate for uh, vapor maxes. I do. I don't charge outrageous. I charge more than I would charge you for a pair of Air Force One. So, um, uh, the next step. Okay, another tip. When you when you dye the bottoms, well, look at that dye job. Woo! When you dye the bottoms, once you dye it, you want to wait a little bit. I say like maybe 30 minutes. I wait 30 minutes. It could be shorter than that, but about 30 minutes. Take you some acetone and a cotton ball and wipe the excess off. So wipe off, you know, do it after the first coat, then apply the second coat. No, actually, you don't do it like that. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Apply both coats. So dye it, wait a couple minutes, dye it again, then take off the excess. It's, it's gonna leave it like this. So don't think you're gonna be taking it off like, man, it's taking all, it's gonna be clear again. It's gonna leave it like this, believe me. All right, so again, this video is a little longer than what I normally do, but I wanted to go in, the, go in depth a little bit more about the Vapor Max. It's my most watched video for a reason. People want to customize Vapor Maxes, but they don't know all the processes, all the steps. You now know how to do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. If you got any questions, hit me up on Instagram. Give your boy a follow on Instagram. Uh, people DM me literally every day. Hey man, I watched this video. What should I do? You know, uh, a lot of questions I get is, uh, man, do I really need that? I got it today, actually. Somebody asked me if they really need two soft. Yes, you know, you can do stuff without it. But remember, if you're doing it for yourself. Trial and error, you know, do it here, do it without the two soft, do it with the two soft and see how it feels. Then, but when you're doing other people's sneakers and kicks and stuff, do it the right way. If they make a product that helps with a certain style of shoe, get that product, you know. You don't want clients to come back to you like, hey man, uh, that shoe didn't hold up, bro. Or, you know, hey man, uh, I don't know what happened to that shoe. I only wore it one time. You don't want that. Take the necessary steps. If, you, Like I said, if you feel like it's a lot, charge them more. This is the last step. Compare your prices with other people's prices. Now, when I say charge them more, don't be like, oh man, you know, that was a lot of work. I'm charging 400 for that. You're not gonna get a lot of business when there's a guy that's better than you and he's charging $60 to do a custom. He's charging anywhere from 60. They got people charging 120. 200, 230, you trying to charge four? So you gotta make sure your prices are aligned, but in the same breath, get your money. Get your money, it's out here. People just got them stimmies, get your money. Hey man, enough talking. Thank y'all for, for sticking around this long. I appreciate y'all. Another video will be up in about two to three days. Peace.